Hi, everybody. Oh, I'm so glad you're joining me today. I'm excited about my guests. So I can't wait to talk to Sue Moran, that's right, the Sue Moran, our state senator, about all kinds of issues coming up, one of them which would affect our Cape Cod Bay. So come along, let's have another Cape Conversation. Hi, everybody. I am so delighted today to have with me our Senator Susan Moran. How Hi, How are you, Susan? Terrific. Great to see you. No COVID symptoms, nothing going on with COVID. You're good? That's right. So we can be in the same room together without masks? That, uh, very healthy and boosted. <clears throat> and boosted. How many times? Uh, three. Oh, three. That's right. The two shots and then the two other boosters, right? All good. All good. Excellent. Me too. So we're in good shape. So Susan, we're gonna to talk today, and I'm so glad you're in here, because this is, scares me to death. I live in Town Neck in Sandwich, and I'm just over the hill from the water, and the tidal marsh runs behind my house, and I really don't wanna see it glow in the dark. So tell me about all the whole tech decommissioning and their fantastic idea of dumping nuclear wastewater into the bay. I'd say don't get me started, but actually <laughs> it got me started. Even before I won the Senate seat, I had worked as an Assembly of Delegates, Deputy of Speaker, Deputy Speaker on behalf of Cape Cod uh -huh. and regional policy and economic development, and went to the State House and worked with Senator DiMacito and testified to the extent that Cape Cod should have more representation because if there ever were any sort of dangerous release, certainly uh, all of Cape Cod Bay as well as Cape Cod communities will be affected. So I actually was in a, a good foundational place to represent the district as a senator on this issue. I see. And it, it was a matter of the federal delegation, really Senator Markey um, and, and Congressman Keating and Senator Warren leading. And once we all heard that Holtec had publicized that they would be releasing as much as a million um, gallons of water or what, whatever. Dirty water, right? Dirty water, radioactive yeah. potentially um, into Cape Cod Bay. Um, there was a moratorium that was set and called and Holtec said it would, it would have the status quo, not do anything for a year, which um, would be next year starting January. So this year beginning in January, I called all the, the constituencies together and I led meetings with the Attorney General's office, with the Department of Public Health, liaisoning with um, uh, Senator Markey's office, which attended, and the delegation from both sides of the canal. So both Cape Cod delegation, Senator and representatives, and Plymouth. And I, I don't think that's been done before, and, but this is a health issue, it's an economic issue, it's a food issue. We have lobster and shellfish fish folks who are concerned, and we are, there's been some um, important developments lately. Well, I guess the, uh, what's kind of amazing to me is when, what I, and it's only what I've read, obviously, I'm not in the know, in the know, but what I read from what they said, it's like, oh, it's, it's only a million gallons and it'll just be swallowed up by the bay water and it'll diffuse and there's already nuclear wastes in the water anyway, just naturally or whatever they say. I don't understand that. Um, I don't understand, I don't understand when they, what, 10 years, 15 years ago, they gave everybody um, tablets, you know, um, iodine tablets in case it blew up. Um, it sits right on a point in Plymouth. That's I mean, important. and it has all those, it has all those alarms and sirens as you drive up 3A. You can see them on the post to alert the communities there's been an accident of some sort. It is a scary, scary place to me. 
And, and I know it changed hands, and I don't know whether it was going to get better or worse when it changed hands, but to me, as just an individual citizen, I'm just a citizen, it's worse. I mean, and I, it's like, to me, again, to me, it's the audacity, the audacity to say, well, this is what we're doing, because we're a corporation and we can do it. And corporations, really, ultimately, um, you have to be careful who ends up being responsible? Is there anyone accountable? And that's why we jumped into action um, on a couple of fronts. Mm -hmm. So first of all, part of the issue was there was zero communication with the community. Mm -hmm. And the, the second thing was, you know, when there is an argument that it, it won't be um, a hazardous situation, well, there hasn't been this situation for such a big release all at once, potentially. There has not been a situation before where there was not communication about actually what's in the water. I've, had, I've spoken with scientists from HUI and others that basically say it's very critical to know the timing of releases, where the ocean current is um, in terms of sea life problems in, in, with respect to any release, and most of this was governed by an attorney general memorandum agreement that resolved a lawsuit uh, with, with Plymouth Nuclear years ago that Holtec is responsible for now. But agreements don't necessarily cover every single scenario. Right. And there is a licensing aspect to it. The, the permit um, right now is being looked at. So Holtec knows um, that they're um, subject to, to whether or not they get permitting. And permitting for what? To continue? For the release. Oh, for the release. As part of Because the, they've closed the plant, have they, they? They've closed the plant, and right now what's left to be done is get rid of the radioactive water. And how is that done? One of the, the ways that um, Holtec had not said to the public they considered would be trucking it to a depository outside of Massachusetts to uh, uh, another state where they do such storage. And what happened at the recent hearing that was held by Senator Markey, uh -huh. that topic came up. And uh, the NRC was also at, at that hearing in um, Plymouth Town Hall. Mm -hmm. And the, the community wanted to know that Holtec, just for economic reasons, to be cheap, wasn't just going to dump. And so the representative for whole time. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? I, yeah. They, they're not trying to, to cut costs. Oh, God, no. That's, that's been the <laughs> That's problem. laughable. It, cutting costs and not communicating are the two biggest yeah. problems. And in fact, there are funds which are available for the process which would end up in whole tech's hands potentially if they're not spent. So that's part of the issue. We don't want to have a situation where we encourage saving those funds and, and having them land in the corporation's coffers as a, as a preferred method to safety of the community. And Holtec's representative testified that, well, we were trying to be expeditious so that Plymouth could have the, the land back and do what it wants with the land. And when you're talking about public safety, and look, look at PFAS for an analogy, right? A lot of products were made with PFAS. We're only now finding out the dangers. I don't want that to be the situation in Plymouth and in uh, the Plymouth Barnstable district years from now when we okay, say- Okay, you have to tell me what PFAS, I don't know what PFAS is. Sure, PFAS is a additive chemical mm -hmm. um, that helps, for example, in like Teflon cooking. Oh, I see. You know, that, okay. that sort right. of thing that right. now is- um, You have to bring people up to speed. Exactly. <laughs> it, um, it's now a uh, danger in Cape Cod, you know, water and, and right. we're, we're spending you know, megabucks fixing that. Right. We're trying to avoid a similar situation right. with Holtec. Right. Well, now, has Holtec been responsive? Not until recently, when Senator Markey did something incredibly unusual, called a field hearing of his committee, and called the NRC 
to the table as well as Holtec. It's only been done once before, and that was when the Lawrence fires and gas explosions occurred. Right. So that's the level of importance the delegation is giving the Plymouth Holtec uh, decommissioning. You know, <clears throat> when you look at Cape Cod as it swoops out and around and comes back, and as you fly out of Logan, you know, you can see the Cape Cod light right at the end, right? Exactly. You know, the, of that spit. Um, and it kind of, the bay kind of holds everything in, it looks like. I mean, it doesn't, but it does in mm -hmm. a sense. And what um, is frightening to me is not only is it an economic base for fishermen, but it's also our tourism dollars. I mean, we've already suffered enough with a pandemic, um, as have fishermen with the pandemic being able to go out and get their catch and all of that, but to have visitors come, hotels, and, and, and now you're going to tell people, well, go ahead and swim in the water. Yeah, there's a little bit of nuclear. So, and you know how this stuff gets out. Nobody keeps it a secret. That's absolutely right. You know? And that's why I filed legislation to actually um, not only penalize dumping, but also we're looking at increasing the test parameters so that we can look at exactly what is being proposed so that we protect our water because we're also it's also our health we want to um, consume the fish fishing shellfish that's another right. big um, big industry on the Cape and it's also as you mentioned the perception is very important that we've done so much work in cleaning up our wastewater issue right. and it, it's still an ongoing challenge right now and the the prior base contamination we put a lot into uh, protecting our sole so source aquifer this will be something that we have an opportunity before it happens so that's why i'm i'm so tough on getting information testing and and accurate um, plans out there so that the public knows. And that came up at the hearing as well. Holtec agreed they would not dump the water and, and, and would review the specifics mm -hmm. through a committee of experts, including uh, Senator Markey and others. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was a huge, um, you know, rec uh, consolation right. that the Holtec rep gave during that hearing. And when was that hearing? Oh, goodness, uh, a couple of weeks ago or so. I was so. looking here on the paper. Sure. It, was, it was in May, though, uh, early May. Right, very recently. And there was a second hearing, um, really a listening session by the NRC the day after, oh. where the NRC proposed a plan for future uh, nuclear decommissioning. And what came out loud and clear from the testimony given uh, to the NRC is, You've got to stop being a paper tiger. You've got to stop being a rubber stamp. The current regulations allow the decommissioning corporations to just say, this is how we're going to do it. And then it starts happening. It gets that rubber stamp by the NRC. Sure. And the public is left to say, wait a minute, what can we do? This is already happening. And so there was strong criticism of the NRC to, to really start putting some teeth in their regulations. But that will affect decommissioning going forward, not so much Holtec. But Holtec was listening. Well, Holtec has other, other plants, don't they, in the country? That's right. They've made decommissioning um, their specialty, I would say. Oh, it's kind of like if you have a, a retail business, you want to go out of sale, uh, go out of business. They have those going out of business people that come in and with their own people put everything on sale and do the big posters. So it's kind of the same thing. It, it sure is. And since we're at the beginning of their, you know, going into that business, I think that um, gives us incredible leverage, not only for the Plymouth decommissioning, mm -hmm. but really to help the country going forward to yeah. do this right. Yeah. Well, what can we do? What can, well, okay, so here we are, you and I are sitting here talking. You know, it's a funny thing about talking. I know a lot of people who talk. <laughs> and um, we all talk a lot. Um, but it's actually getting action. I mean, what do we do to get the action needed to make this stop? So I would say one of the key things that the average person can do is send a letter or an email to my office 
so that I can gather the, the constituent response up and send it to the committee that's right now reviewing my legislation. There is always, um, you know, uh, both sides of, of an argument. Yeah, yeah. And one of the questions that's been raised about my legislation is that, well, there are certain um, medical reasons to dump radioactive material. We've all gotten, you know, an MRI or, you know, we know that there is some. And, and my response <laughs> is, don't hold up the Plymouth decommissioning legislation. Let's, you know, if it makes sense, let's exempt that out or let's just let's negotiate the legislation right. so that we can get it passed. So that would be very helpful to me. All right. So they need to send an email to your email address, which is uh, Susan.Moran at MASenate.gov. I believe. Okay. And we'll put that underneath here. I'll put the right one underneath yeah. here because I don't email myself. But right. I, I think understand. That's... I understand. And if they wanted a letter, they would just send it to the State House? Uh, yes, to the State House address. Or you, it, that's, um, you know, when you look up at mass.gov, find yeah. Senator Moran and just click, click and away. copy and send. Exactly. Excellent. Good, 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 good. So you hear that, everybody? You need to send an email to Senator Moran so she can show this to people that we really, really, really don't want to let this happen. It's important to the Plymouth Barnstable District and it's important to the country moving forward. So, so once again, we're a test case. <laughs> Which I'm taking full advantage of. Well, and well, we should, right? Um, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, and we used to, as the young housewives, uh, back in the early 70s, we used to go test products. It's kind of the same thing. We're being a test where they're trying to test us. In this case, it's not so good for our health, though, I don't no. think. It, it's, it's not something that's uh, going to benefit us. What's going to benefit us is put the right brains on this so it doesn't run away. Right. So when do they think, when does Holtec think that the entire plant, I know it's stopped now, it's not working anymore, right? Right, correct. So, when did, what are they going to do? Okay, so let's say they can't, they have to, they have to uh, take the water out. Then what happens to the plant? They so tear it down? It, right now, it's, it's sort of beneath the ground at this point, and mm -hmm. so there's a potential agreement that's being negotiated with the town of Plymouth to decide how to use the, the actual real estate. There's also negotiations going on with respect to if it is trucked out, what sort of uh, payment would go to Plymouth to deal with all of the, you know, the way it's almost like moving a house where you've got to worry about the roads and you have to have police and say, fire. How, how do they even do that? I it, mean, I know it happens all the time and we don't even know about it, I'm sure. We do know it's expensive. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't everything? Right, and it's not something that the host communities should have to be left holding, you know, holding the bucket right. with. So this company goes in and decommissions nuclear plants. Is other plants as well or just nuclear? Uh, that I'm not sure. I think they have various divisions in their mm -hmm. company, but I've only, I'm only uh, familiar with the nuclear. So usually they go in, they go, oh, no worries, we'll take care of this. And then they decommission it and they get rid of the stuff, however they do it, and they go away and they make money. Is that correct? That, that's right. And not, o not always do they get rid. Sometimes they just leave it underground. In for, fact, and most it, often. And, and it's there for it's, in perpetuity. It's radioactive material. It takes decades to get to a point where it's no longer dangerous. Um, what do they do with the reactors and all of that? Do, do those go away? Those, uh, not an expert on the I dismantling, but they are de decontaminated. I see, I see. Um, well, this is it's a scary situation. Um, so if people write to you and say, please do not let this happen, and let's push through that legislation. That's what you're looking for. A absolutely, and one of the things I've already been using, mm -hmm. for example, in the town of Falmouth, I voted before coming here today, and there is a citizen's, you know, really message. If oh, to, we had to a have, and you had a sandwich. So right. I, I took all of those 
to the hearing. I took every board of selectmen, every board of health letter, and now we'll take the votes of the community and bring them forward and to, to Holtec, to the federal delegation, and also um, to the Senate committees as, it's, as the legislation is reviewed. Well, and it's not only going to affect Sandwich and Barnstable and Falmouth, but it's going to, the entire curve of the Cape, it's going to be every single community along the water, or certainly along the Bayside, more importantly. It's an international threat because of the way that winds can carry contaminants. Sure. As well sure, as waves. Sure. I have to laugh though, in Sandwich, I think it was 93% voted in favor of not letting them dump it into the bay. But I, my husband and I were talking, who's the 7%? Uh. I mean, did they just do it as a joke? I mean, yeah, go ahead. And by the way, I'll have some for breakfast, you know, well, with my pancakes. I think that there's a belief of the ocean being so big, what can really happen, right? No, but we've not learned. Oh, my goodness. And it gets into our fish. It gets into our lobsters, our shellfish. It, it gets into what we consume. And you know, it's it's something that we we want to leave our you know our resources to the next generation. So f I'm going to say say it, and I know I'm not pronouncing it right. F Fujihami, Fuji, Fukihami, whatever it was, the nuclear that disaster. disaster in Japan, right. right? Well, they had there was an issue that the that some of that leaked, right? Not only do we have all the trash from the earthquake come this direction right. and, and actually went on to the beaches in Seattle and, and Oregon and Northern California. I mean, beyond belief amount of... We've uh, seen it. Yeah. Chernobyl. Uh, Chernobyl. There's another one. Yes. Um, why somebody thinks that you can just, you know, throw it up in the air, oh, well, there's a lot of atmosphere, it won't matter. It, just, it doesn't almost make sense. It seems like common sense would tell you. We're overwhelming Mother Nature, and yeah. we've got to stop doing that. Well, and look, we, you know, if you're pregnant, you're not supposed to eat swordfish. Exactly. Go, you know, it's for the same reason. There's because of contaminants in swordfish that they, their meat holds whatever that contaminant is. So, um, yeah, this is it's a crazy thing for sure. So again, they need to write to you. It would help you dramatically if some if people would send you. Um, an email or a note, uh, not only about the legislation, but also about, please do not do this to the Cape Cod Bay. Absolutely. All right, and they're gonna email you at your Senate office. That's right. That's right, or send you a lovely letter, or handwritten. Or send me a handwritten letter. I mean, is there such a thing anymore? There, there is. It's, <laughs> it's less common, but it's more appreciated. Yeah, well, as long as they're good letters. Right. <laughs> We know how that can go, I guess, so, don't we? And is there anything else you need us to know about this? I, I would say check my website um, for upcoming opportunities to let your voice be heard and to hear more about, I think just in the Cape Cod Times today was an article about Holtec's agreement um, to get buy-in and expert um, information and testing and for there to be a public um, really decision about the next step. So um, you'll see okay. that on my website. Okay, so they can, they can go and get more information on your website as That's well. Right. And your fellow senators, they're all 99.9% .9 in favor of not letting this happen? I, I haven't heard one senator or representative um, be in disagreement, I will tell you that. And our current governor? I have not spoken with the governor about this particular issue. I um, just thought maybe he'd come out about it or something. I certainly, um, if folks are interested, they can put that in their uh, correspondence to me and sure. I will um, uh, forward that request. All right. Well, you would think he would say something. I, I, think I understand that his second home is in New Hampshire. However, <laughs> that said, <laughs> <laughs> that you know the Cape is you know he was uh, down here not too long ago about the expansion of the bike path so yeah uh, Governor Baker certainly appreciates and the bridges he wants and us the bridges to, so we're gonna bring more people here so and the lieutenant governor uh, has a place on the Cape so right. there is wide agreement about the importance of um, the the beauty um, in, in the economy of the Cape to 
Massachusetts. Right. Well, and, and the water around us, that's, it, it's our livelihood. It's our, it's our economic foundation. starter and foundation. You're absolutely foundation. I yeah. was saying starter, but foundation. You're absolutely right. It's exactly what it is. Um, and again, they need to send you an email um, uh, to you. And you can find all this probably if you just even went to the state house and looked you up. Mass.gov. Yep. Mass.gov. And you're on there as a senator. Right. Your name's right there. My name's right there. <laughs> Great, that's wonderful. Um, and as I told you, and you know that Sandwich voted against having this happen, and I'm sure that Falmouth will for uh, as well. I'm sure, and good, I, good I don't bet. know about Bourne, but I would assume they would as well. So I'm bringing bringing them all right to Holtec. Well, good for you. That's wonderful. Good, good, good. Stand up for us. <laughs> That's exactly what I appreciate doing. Good. Excellent. Well, thank you for joining me today. This has been great. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Melinda. Let's get the word out. SCTV. Yeah. SCTV. Yeah, they are. It's a wonderful partner for the community, for sure. Sure is. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Sue Moran was so terrific. She knows everything there is to know about dumping of the radioactive waste from Holtec into our Cape Cod Bay. She's on top of it. But if you want to get your opinion in, you need to send her an email or a letter to her office. And you can find all of that on her website as well. And you can do that and let people know how you feel. Very important. So thank you for joining me today, and I'll see you next time on another Cape Conversation. The views expressed in this program are the views of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the SCTV staff or board of directors.